Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. So I need to learn to keep calm and crochet on <laughs> but looking at my patterns list here I'm just so stressed out. I just need to grab some yarn and a hook and let's begin to play. So let's start today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Cliff Crest Crochet Cable Collar. Now this is cable work. This is a beautiful collar and it's a great way to commit to keeping yourself warm without having to commit to a whole sweater. <laughs> so this is something I did wear as a child uh, in my teenage years actually because it was kind of uncool to wear your mitts and your hats and stuff. So I had one of these that uh, acted as just keeping my neck warm while I waited for the bus. So it's a great practical project. So this is what it looks like underneath the coat. So you put it on, you put the coat over top, you probably never even know that it's not a full sweater. So it gives you that illusion that you're wearing a full like crochet uh, sweater. In actual fact it's just underneath your coat. So it's a great idea. So this is an intermediate level project. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and I'm going to be using a Peyton's Classic Wool Yarn and so I have three balls of that because that's what it calls for and the color that I'm using on camera today is called Petal Pink. So it's the only uh, three balls that I had of the same color. So we have a crochet diagram that's gonna be available to you and we're gonna follow it step by step but without further ado let's just start jumping into this thing and let's examine our first steps. So we should examine exactly how we're gonna be doing this thing. So we're gonna start off with doing the front work piece here. This is the front. So you're going to do this whole piece and what is missing here that you cannot see is that we just need to continue the pattern to create a little bit of a lift for the shoulders area. So it's just on the one side, well actually on both sides but the middle has been left empty. We'll be getting there. The back then is doing the same part as the front here but instead of doing the cable work it just remains flat. So what we have to pay attention to and the reason why it looks a lot more complicated in the instructions is that the edges here have the rib stitching to create that look that you're seeing. So the back is actually done as a one piece unit and then you can see here that it's sewn to the piece right here which is those front pieces that are gonna be coming up. So it's actually not that difficult when you uh, look at it. So it's not a very big project in the sense of the sizing and uh, we're gonna be getting into our work now. So let's begin with the slip knot. This is an intermediate level project. Five millimeter size H crochet hook with your Peyton's Classic Wool as a choice. Now you're going to chain a total of 46. So one, two, three, four and five and go all the, way to, all the way to 46 and meet me back here in just a moment. So let's begin row number one. This is part of the ribbing right at the very base as I mentioned. So you're gonna go third chain from the hook so you're gonna count it and go one, two and go to the third. Turn it to the back hump of the chain. It'll look nicer. This skipping chains that we are doing is counted as a stitch so don't uh, think that it's not. So I want you to half double crochet the third chain from the hook on the back hump of the chain. Once you do the first chain the chain will stay upside down to do it. The reason why I do it this way is that you'll have a nicer edge appearance. So just move down your chain with one half double crochet in each of the back humps and I'll be right back in a moment and you should have a total of 45 half double crochets by the time you get there and make sure you just double count just to check and I'll be back in a moment. This is row number one. Now I've come all the way across. I just wanna show you something before we get any further. I am using Peyton's Classic Wool. This here will felt if it's actually uh, washed. So you just gotta be careful. So the original sample that is being done is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted which will not felt. So just keep an eye and I would have put a tip when I flashed this before but I just wanna let you know that I, I know that. So I just wanna make sure that we're all good. <laughs> so at the end of row number one we're going to turn our work and begin the second row and I have verified that there is 45 half double crochets. Let's move on to row number two. So let's begin row number two. We're gonna start the ribbing effect. So I need you to chain two. That will count as your first half double crochet. So your next one is the one right beside it right here. And I need you to start with the back post double crochet. So wrap the hook and come from the back side and pop it to the front just to grab around that post and then pop it back out to the back. And then yarn over, pull through and then pull through two and two. And now the next one is going to be a front post 
double crochet. So it's the next one right here. So wrap the hook, stay on the front, dive in between the post and come back out the front, pull through, pull through two and two and you're gonna alternate between the two of these uh, stitches. So the next one has to be a back post. So wrap, come from the back side to the front and then push to the back so that you get that one post. Pull through, pull through two and two and then the next one is a front post. So to be consistent with this you're gonna go and alternate between those two stitches. The last stitch before the end should be a back post double crochet and then you'll finish off with a half double crochet in the top and I'll meet you there in just a moment just to demonstrate but just keep going across just showing what I showed you and create those ribs and I'll be back in a moment. So coming all the way across I got two stitches left. The last one before the very end is a back post double crochet so it's just a matter of keeping the right counts. Okay so nothing special and then in the turning chain I need you to apply one half double crochet. So if you're new to crochet the reason for this is that when you do back posts or front posts like this it squats down the stitches it makes it smaller. So if you put a double crochet right in the end without being around a post it makes the stitch too tall. So let's turn to work and begin row number three and you would, would have noticed it now has elasticity and that's great for what we're doing. Okay number three and four are gonna be both the same. Uh, they're actually written differently but they're, the concept is the same let me say it that way. So row number three you're gonna turn you're gonna we've already turned so you're gonna chain two that's your first half double crochet. Do you see how this here is on the front side facing you? We wanna keep this as ribs so we're not doing a zigzag um, idea we're doing a, a officially a rib. So this is on the front side here this this one here so we're going to keep it as a front post double crochet. Sorry I'm trying to over explain that. Mansplaining this way. So here's the next one. You can see that it's in behind. So you wanna keep that in behind. You see what I'm saying? You're matching what you see. So this one's in the front. So you're gonna keep it as a front post double crochet. And the next one is a back post. And I need you to do that all the way across for row number three. And I'll be right back in just a moment. I'm coming close to the end of number three. So I'm just coming there and then the turning chain I have to put one half double crochet into the turning chain. Don't go into a space because it will open it up and just finish it. Turn your work and let's begin row number four and this will be the final of the main ribbing at the base of your collar. To do number four you're gonna chain up two and you're gonna follow what you see. So you can see this is in behind. So you're gonna keep that as in behind. So back post double crochet and then the next one is a front post double crochet and I just need you to keep alternating between the two stitches all the way to the end of the row and at the end of the row is going to be the ending of the ribbing at the base of the collar and then we're gonna move on into the cabling after that. So please go across for row number four. And coming up to the end of number four just matching the stitches and in the last turning chain it'll be a half double crochet and this is the base of the ribbing. Do not fasten off. Let's turn our work and let's bring back the diagram and let's explain what's gonna happen next. So let's break down this diagram. You'll notice in your right, uh, printout here you have the stitch keys that are available to you what the stitches mean. So that just it gives you a really great opportunity when you're being able to play with this. So you, what you're going to notice is that there's CR4F that's in the front and CR4B that's in the back. You notice how bright this is. So this is crossing in the front and when you do this one it's crossing in the back. Okay so just keep an eye on that in order to make sense. So this pattern is one of the reasons why I chose it is that every other row going forward is just a straight single crochet back. So you don't have to worry about the cables being able to apply them when you cannot see them. So the cables are only applied on the right side the front side of the work that people see when they're when you're wearing it. So you're gonna go across in row number one. We're gonna do all the fancy work and we're gonna get ourselves set up to do this. And then when we return back on number two it's straight single crochet in each stitch going back. So then row number three we're gonna do the fancy work and put the cabling and the ribbing in that you see and then in number four it's straight back. So how I'm gonna do this part is that I'm gonna show you how to go across number one and I'm gonna tell you to return back with single crochet and then meet me at or row number three and then we'll pick up again and then I'll tell you to return back and meet me on number five. 
So that's how I'm gonna do this part of this tutorial because I think it's the easiest way to do it. Let's begin. Row number one, this is part of the repeat. So let's go through row number one. At the time of filming there's a small error that's going to be fixed in the future and it's right here. So do you see how it kind of looks like there's uh, it's really spaced out? This should be here of a single crochet to here and a single crochet to here. So this is gone. Okay, so there's gonna be two stitches into the same one to give you the same count. Because currently we're at 45 stitches and we need to get ourselves to 46 in order to have the proper balance. As we begin row number one, we're going to come on down and we're going to a single crochet the first and then jump on down to do these front post double crochets and we're gonna do that three times. It's really easy to maintain these on the edging. The edging will always be the same. Once we get that done, we're going to single crochet the next five in a row and then we're going to do these crisscross here and this crisscross here is a crisscross uh, 4F. So it's in front. So the second part is going to be in the front and you'll notice that it happens three times in a row. So Gail the designer has given us the opportunity that we don't have to really think too hard because she's used the same crossing overs on the same row. Once we get that done, that will count uh, as the four that it's sitting in front of and then you'll have then the next six in a row single crochet. Then you'll do that another crisscross again. Here you're going to single crochet the first two and then this one right in the middle should have two into the same one and then you'll do the next two and that will open it up just slightly to give you the space that you need. You'll do another crisscross and then you do the final five single crochets before doing the edging coming down and then when we come back on the other side it's gonna be nice and simple just single crochet back. So let's do rows now one and two. So let's do rows now one and two. You're going to chain one so this is row number one and you're gonna single crochet in the top of that first half double crochet. We're now going to come down and you were gonna come down to the second row below. So not just this one, it's the second and you're going to do a front post double crochet around the second one down and this will make it that rib jump off. So that will count as the rib that it's sitting in front of here. So then you'll single crochet in the next and then you'll come on down again and front post double crochet into this rib. So two rows below and then you'll single crochet the next single and then one more time to jump down. Just like that. So starting in this next single crochet I want you to do the next five in a row. So just five single crochets in a row. So we have one, two, three, four and five. So now we're going to do the crisscross concept. So we have to kind of look at where we are right now and you can see that we we're right here. So these four in a row that you're about to do is going to become a crisscross. So here's what we're going to do. You're gonna skip the first two. So if you follow it straight down you can see it and we just have to get ourselves established and then the rest of this will become a lot easier. So the first two we're going to skip and so we're gonna come over to here and this will be a front post double crochet reaching over and the next one is going to be around this back post here but from the front as well. Now you're gonna go to the two that you skipped which is this one and this one. So you do the furthest one that's away from you right now which is this one. and then you do the next one which is sitting in the back. Just kind of use your fingers and just pop it forward if you can't see it. And now those four are done. So you can kind of follow it up. So here's the next one right here. So you're gonna do the next six single crochet. The next, yeah, the next six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and now you're gonna do exactly what we just did. So these four here are gonna be where we're gonna play. So you're gonna miss the first two and go to the second or sorry go to this uh, third one right here 
and do your front post double crochets. Just lean them over. Just pop those back ones out if you can't see it. And now come to the ones that you skipped which is this one and then this one. Okay. Now we're gonna just continue to go along. So this time this is that special area I was talking about that is missing currently at the time of filming. So you're just gonna do the first two, a single crochet, one and two. And now the next one is gonna have two single crochets in it. So one and two. And then you'll single crochet the next two and that gives you the counting of six was what you need. And now you're gonna do a crisscross again. So around the next four is where you're gonna go. You're gonna come to the third one. that you skipped over. And now moving along you're gonna do the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see that you have these posts that are already like jumping out in front of you. So those are the three that you're gonna work with with the edge. So just come on down and again two rows below. I do front post double crochets to maintain that. So then there will be single crochets in between them. And then finally the last stitch is going to be a half double crochet in the turning chain. And that was row number one. So we're now getting our cabling starting. And now you're gonna turn your work and do row number two. And as I mentioned before, it's just a matter of just chain one and single crochet yourself all the way across. This helps stabilize the crossing over of stitches and will be awesome. So every other row is gonna be like this. And I'll be back in a moment and pick you up and we'll do number three. So I'm coming to the end of number two and just single crochet right into the last stitch. Turn your work and now let's go over and do number three and four. In row number three we're gonna keep our edging the same. We're just gonna come on down and do your, your three that are there. Now there's gonna only be four single crochets in a row and once you get the four done you're gonna reach on over and grab the two posts that are in behind. And you'll do those. So those are sitting in behind so you'll have to pop those forward and you'll uh, front post double crochet those two. You'll single crochet then the next two and then you're going to come back and you're gonna pick up the ones that are in front here with two front post double crochets. And you're gonna continually do that as you're working your way across. So there's four stitches in between them. And now that we have fixed the count right here, everything gets pretty easy as you're going across. So let's take you across row number three and four next. So let's do number three. You're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet in the first one. So the edging will always be the same as I mentioned before. So once you get the first one done you're gonna jump on down and wrap around the other front post double crochet with a new front post double crochet and that will count as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So you'll single crochet the next and then come on down for the next one and single crochet the next and one more time. And once that last one is in you are going to then and if you're not sure which one if you turn it around you'll see that there's an empty stitch there. So that's the one that is sitting in front of so you know to start with the next one. So I need you to do the next four in a row. So one, two, three, and four. And now I need you to reach over to these ones that are sitting in behind. So you're gonna use your fingers and you're gonna pop those out and just dig in. So just wrap and go to the first one that you can get and you do a front post double and then you do its friend. The friend is there. Just gotta pop it out from the back. So there's two and now you can look behind and say okay those are the two that that's counting as. So the next two is this one right here. And now you're gonna use these. So you start with the first one 
and post double. And so if you're not sure where to start, which I would do if you weren't watching me, these two are the ones that those two count as. So now you're gonna do the next four in a row. So one, two, three, and four. And let's do what we already know. So now we're gonna come down and we're gonna pick up that to do a front post double. So we got the first one and the second one you just have to dig it out from the back. two and you're gonna do the next two. And now you're gonna pick up these two. So those two and you'll do the next four. Okay and then you do that crisscross or that idea again. So now you're just gonna reach on over to do the first one. Don't be scared to manipulate it if you cannot see it. And now there should only be four left. One, two. So you're gonna do the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And now you're gonna jump on down and do your edging. And this will be concluding then row number three. So you're gonna turn your work and just single crochet yourself back. So chain one, one single in each and this will be row number four and I'll be right back in just a moment to pick you up on number five and six. So now let's do five and six. So you do the edging what you already know. You'll do that on both sides. So after you get that edging done you'll do just the next three and then you'll just do what you just did um, coming on down front post double crochet. You'll do those two in a row and then you'll have four in a row that are empty like those single crochets that are in there. That's what I mean. And then the front post double crochets that are gonna come down and pick up those two and then there will just be two single crochets before you do that again. So it's getting wider as the, as the braiding separates from each other. Then row number six clearly one single crochet in each coming back. Okay let's do row number five and six. So just chain up one. You'll do your edging. So one single crochet and then you'll jump on down. This is called, it's almost like an alpine stitch when you do this in the ribbing concept. So you'll single crochet the next and then come on down for the front post double. And then after that last front post double is in, you are only going to, and I'm just checking, so you're just going to single crochet then the next three in a row. So one, two, three. You're then going to pick up these two and bring them with you. So just front post double crochet around the first one and then the second one. Everything's working in pairs. So those count as the two that it's sitting in front of. So you're just gonna single crochet the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then coming on down and picking up those two. and those count as the two that it's sitting in front of. And so in between the two cabling uh, systems here you only have two single crochet and then you do that all over again. So just pick up this next two. And do you remember how many stitches are in between this one and this one? It's gonna be four. So one, two, three, and four. And then you'll pick up these two, take them with you. Let's count as the two that's sitting in front of. So you'll single crochet the next two. 
and then do that all over again. So pick up the next two over here. Do the next four. And then coming on down. And as you approach then the ribbing there's only three single crochets left. Let's check in one, two. So there will be a three. So one, two, three. And then you'll do your edging of coming on down and single crocheting in between just to maintain that ribbing edge. So you only have to think for a portion of the row. The rest of it will become automatic. And this will conclude then row number five. Just check it, make sure it makes sense. Turn your work and let's begin row number six of just one chain one and then one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. I'll meet you on number seven in just a moment. So let's pick up on number seven. So you're gonna start your edging the same and this time after that's done you only have two and then you'll pick up these two and then you will have a total of six single crochets in a row and then you'll pick up these two and then you'll immediately pick up these two so that they're almost coming together at that point. And then you do the next six and then you do the same situation you did there and then you'll do the next six and then pick up the final two and there will only be two left before you get to the final edge. And then single crochet yourself back for number eight. So let's do seven and eight now. Okay let's do number seven. You're just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in the first stitch and then jump on down and do your edging. Okay, so once you get the edging situated there, the next two in a row are going to be single crochet. Just lean it forward. I don't wanna keep telling you to do that but just keep leaning forward if you're not sure. You're gonna pick up these two and bring them with you. And there will be six in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six and then you'll pick up these two and take it with you. And then immediately pick up the next two and take them with you as well. And those count as the four that it's sitting in front of. And so now you'll crochet the next, single crochet the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then pick up the next two and take it with you. And then immediately pick up these two over here. And those count as the four that is sitting in front of. And then you'll do the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll pick up these two and you'll do the next two single crochets only and then you're on to the edging. So come on down, pick up that edging Okay, and this will conclude then row number seven and then eight of course you are going to just turn your work, chain one and single crochet yourself back across for row number eight. I'll be back in just a moment, pick up on number nine. So we're now going to do numbers nine and ten. So what we're going to do is do your edging which you already know and then you're going to single crochet the next two. You're gonna front post double crochet around these two so this is gonna start coming back up and doing a turn to go back up into a point this way. You'll do the next six. Here you're going to do that crisscross so you reach on over but when you do the next part here 
these two last time they were in the front side. This time they're gonna be in the back. It's a bit awkward. So I'm not gonna deny that to you but you only have to do it twice in, when you hit this type of row. So just don't worry about it too much. So you'll have to do those so they stay on the back so that this line stays on the front side. It's what creates the whole intertangling of cabling. You'll do the next six in a row and then do the exact same stitch and do the next six. Come on down and then two before doing the edging. And so then you'll single crochet yourself back for ten. Let's do nine and ten next. So let's do nine. So chain up one and you'll single crochet and do your edging. So you single crochet the first and then jump on down. I always like when they do cable wing like this when there's a consistency. It helps keep the counts. And then after the last one goes down there's gonna be only two single crochets in a row. So we have one and two and then pick up this here. And now just uh, do the next six in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six. And now here's where we are. So we're gonna reach on over to this one right here and we'll do the first two and we're gonna reach into those ones but from the back side and I'll show you how that's done. So do the first two and now we have to pick up those two. So what you have to do is manipulate your hook so that you can get it in between the space here just to pick it up. So just wrap and just kind of squeeze it in behind but you're still on the front side of the work but you're just picking up that cable and you're double crocheting. It's awkward if you've never done this before. So once you get the first one you'll do the second one the same way. So when I say from the back side you're not going in the back of the project you're just going up underneath these two that were in front. And so you can see it creates that layering. So those count as the four that it's sitting in front of. So you're just gonna immediately then do the next six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So do you see that? So you're gonna do the exact same thing. So just come on over to the first two nice and easy. And now get to the ones that you s skipped over and just kind of manipulate it in behind and pick it up. So there you go. And then those count as the four, one, two, three, four. And do the next six in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then come on straight down and pick up those two. And then after those two are done, you only have two stitches before the edge. So we have one and two and then come on straight down and pick up those edging and do that to the end. So when you're ready you can turn your work and begin the next row. That'll be number ten and it's just a single crochet yourself all the way back. So at the end just turn chain one, one single crochet and do row number ten. I'll pick you up on number eleven in just a moment. So let's begin number eleven. You're going to start up, you're doing your edging and then there will be three in a row and then you're gonna pick up these two and start then dragging it back towards the center again. Then you'll have four in a row and then you'll pick up the two that are here in the front side. Then you'll have two single crochets and then you'll pick up these two that are sitting in behind. You'll then have four in a row and then you'll do the exact same thing and then you'll end up with the edging. Just remember that there will be three single crochets before you start your edging on the other side and then single crochet yourself back for row number 12. Let's do 11 and 12 next. Let's begin number 11. You're gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in the first and then do your edging. So jump on down and then single 
and jump down and single. If you see it rolling like this that's a natural element because you're playing on the front side only. So don't worry about it. So now once you get that last one done you just wanna single crochet the first three. So one, two and three and now you're gonna pick up those two and bring it with you. And then those will count as the two that it's sitting in front of and then you'll do the next four. So one, two, three and four and now you'll pick up these two right here and then you'll do the next two in a row and now these the next one that you're gonna pick up you just gotta manipulate things so that you can get access to it so you gotta pick up the two that are sitting underneath. So just look how are you gonna do it. You can almost fake it if you don't get the right spot because it is sitting underneath. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying you can. Okay, got it. So that those count as the two that's in front of. So now there's a four in a row. So one, two, three, four. And now you'll pick up these two. Counts as the two it's sitting in front of. So do the next two, single crochet and then pick up these. You just gotta manipulate the stitches if you can't see it. There's no harm in, in moving stitches around with your hook. So then you, that's a two and then there'll be four in a row. So one, two, three and four and then you'll pick up these here and those will start then going back toward the center of the of the collar. Those count as those two and now there's only three in a row. So one, two, three and then you just jump down and do your edging and when you're at the end of the row what are you gonna do? If you said that you were just gonna turn chain one and one single crochet and that means that you get a cookie. So go on over to the fridge, help yourself and I'll be right back and we'll pick you up on row number 13 and 14 right after this. So row number 13 and 14 we're going to start off our edging and then this time there will be four single crochets in a row and you'll pick up these two. Two single crochets and then you'll pick up these two and then there will be four in between and you're gonna do this all the way across and then you're edging on the other side and then you'll do your return pass then with your single crochet on row number 14. So let's begin 13 and 14 next. Let's begin number 13. You're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet the first one and do your edging of coming on down. So these kind of rolling ideas that you see if you just damp your project and just lay it flat um, it solves those kind of issues. Just it's called blocking when you do that. But as you're crocheting it of course you're not gonna block it as you go uh, in this particular instance. So now you're going to do the next four in a row. I'm just single crochet excuse me. So once those four are done you're gonna pick up those two and take it with you. And those count as the two that it will sit in front of. And then you'll single crochet then the next two, one and two and then you'll reach on over and pick up these two and bring them over. Okay and those will count as the two it will sit in front of so now you'll do the next four. So one, two, three, and four and then picking up those two, take them with you. And then do the next two and pick up these two and bring them over. And 
and do the next four. So one, two, three, four. Pick up those two and take them with you. And then do the next two. And then reach on over and grab these two. And then after that, it's the next four in a row. So one, two, three, and four, and then you're back on your edging. So this is concluding row number 13. You're gonna do 14 next, which is just a return pass of single crochet. So turn, chain one, one single on each, and I'll meet you at the beginning of number 15 in a moment. Let's go on to number 15. You'll do your edging which you already know and this time there will be a total of five single crochets. You're then gonna come down and pick up these two and then immediately come down and pick up those two so they'll be together in that set of four. Then you're gonna have six in a row and then you'll do the exact same thing and then you'll have six in a row and then do the exact same thing and then at the end here there will be five before you get to the edge and then your edge and of course number 16 you're gonna do your return pass and I'll be back in just a moment. So let's do row number 15. Chain up one, do one single crochet in the first and then do your edging. So come on down. I'm actually, I enjoy cabling. It actually keeps me mentally interested in the project. So for some people it just kind of is too much work for them to process or they just don't want that um, amount of thinking. But for me it keeps me interested. Okay, so now after you get that done, you're gonna have the first five will be on its own. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna pick up these two and bring them with you. And then you're just gonna immediately reach over to these two and pick those up as well and pull those over. And so that account is the four it's sitting in front of and you'll do the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you do the exact same thing again. So you pick up these two. And then picking up these two. those count as the four it's sitting in front of and do the next six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then pick up these two and bring those together with the other one. There's no trebles in this if you've noticed using cables there are. So maybe you can appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, one, two, three, four. And now you, there's gonna be a total of five left over that you'll do before the edge. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you have your edging. So come on down. And this will be concluding then row number 15. And so you'll turn your work and do number 16, single crochet back. So turn chain one and do 16 going back in the other direction and I'll pick up a number 17 and 18 in just a moment. So let's go on to 17 and 18 which is the final of the repeat before you will pick up back up a number three and do all the way through 18 for a set number of times which we will get into later. So number 17 we're gonna do our edging and then there will be five single crochets in a row and then we're gonna crisscross like we did way back in the beginning right down here. So we're gonna reach across and then these two will be in front. Then you'll have six in a row, then you'll crisscross again, six in a row, crisscross again, and then you'll have five before the edging. And then of course the return pass then is number 18, which is single crochet. Let's do rows number 17 and 18 next. So let's do rows number 17 and 18. So 17 is chain one, one single into the first, and then do your edging as you know it. So drop on down. So 
So hopefully you're doing so good. You can leave me a comment if how you're doing on this pattern so far. So what we have now is there's gonna be five single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now you're gonna do a crisscross. So you're gonna reach over to this one right here. And then do the first two. And then these ones here you're gonna pick up and you're not going in behind like we did. We're just gonna pick those straight up and do those two. And you see the layering that it will create. Okay, so the count is the four that it's sitting in front of. And so then you'll do the next six in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then start that all over again. So crisscross. Okay, and that counts as the four it's sitting in front of. And do the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then do it again, crisscross. So I like how Gail has left it for us to do this crisscross in the easier way more often. So the only ones that are kind of awkward is that other one where you crisscross in the back. And you only have to do that twice. So it's a nice treat. <laughs> you take your wins when you can get it right. So that counts as the four it's sitting in front of, and then you do the final five. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then jump on down and do your edging. So this will end then number 17 and you will do number 18 which is just single crochet and return back across. And I'm gonna pick you up in just a few moments after that and we're gonna talk about your repeating because you'll need a tape measure. And you can cycle back through the repeating and we have video chapters available so I'll talk about that. So row number 18, chain one, one single all the way back and I'll be back in a moment. So now I've just finished up to row number 18. So now I can cycle back through the pattern and so I have to cycle back through here and I gotta pick up on row number three going through 18 again. So when I'm looking at the pattern here it says to repeat rows number three, three, three to 18 until the project measures approximately 17 and a half inches. And so once you get that and you need to end on the 18th. We have video chapters in this particular video so you can just scroll back in the timeline to number three. Uh, just uh, you can see that on the bottom of the player bar or you can see it in the video description as well to go back to here. So this is what you're going to do. So I need you to now repeat number three through 18 until your project measures approximately seven and a half inches. And when I look at this when I'm measuring it now it's not too far from where I'm gonna be. So um, I just gotta repeat I think one more time and that's where I'm gonna pick up next and I'll be back in a moment. So I've now just crocheted all the way back from three through 18 one more time. So let me just take a measuring tape I haven't measured yet. So this will be live on video and it's approximately uh, about nine inches. I'm not gonna worry about it too much um, in the sense that it's awesome. But now it's missing something. So this is the front panel. So now it's missing the shoulders here. So let me show you a different diagram that I made up. It's pretty pedestrian which means that it's pretty crude or rough. And what I did is I took this diagram and I banged it out on my computer eliminating out some stitch work. You can see that. And what we need to do is that we need to create one shoulder and then once we're done that shoulder we come back and we create the other shoulder and then that's where it's going to end. So the back panel will literally be done completely and join to those sections here. So that leaves the opening for your head to go through. So we're gonna start and we're gonna begin working. So we're gonna start and begin to work and we're gonna work on the one side and then we're gonna pick up and then do the other side. So I do diagram formats. You can get this diagram available on the crochetcraft.com under this article, the Cliff Crest Cowl and uh, that's available for free download and I do this for myself so that um, I don't get confused 
more than I usually do. So let's begin right now. Bringing up this one just before we begin I wanna just indicate where we are. We're right here on the pattern number three of uh, four on the pages. We're gonna shape the neck for the first part and then we're gonna do that one and that is going to be this side here. And then this part here it says with the right side facing skip 14 stitches. That's what we're skipping and we're gonna start here and then work our way up. Let's begin. So we have to maintain the pattern. That's why I wanted to diagram this out because we wanna keep those particular cables going when it's appropriate. So our goal is to get ourselves down to nine stitches in the end. So what we have to do is that we have to start and go a portion of the way over and then when we chain up we're gonna put the first two together and single crochet all the way back. The next row we're gonna just chain up and go all the way over to the last one following the stitches and then coming back. So there's always gonna be a two together here for quite some time and then the final three rows will just be uh, back and forth in a regular format. So let me just draw that there as well just to make sure that we understand that. Okay, so let's begin and let's start our journey right now. So let's begin the one side here and we're going to chain up one and we're gonna follow the diagram as we have it. So we're gonna single crochet and we're gonna maintain the edge. So the edge continues to maintain itself all the way to the top where we finish off. So we'll do our edging. And it's just what you already know. And then after this last one drops down it's gonna be the next four in a row that will be single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna grab these two that are down here. They're kind of underneath at this moment but we'll pull those out. You've already done that before. The only difference is that you're not going all the way across. So once those two are done that counts as the two that it's sitting in front of. So one, two and you'll single crochet the next two. And then the very final two stitches for this side is just gonna go in the front post of the existing braid there. And then that's where you're gonna stop. So you need to turn your work and now do the next row. And so by chaining one you're going to eliminate out a stitch. So let's do that first. For clarity reasons I'm gonna say this is row number four. So of the shoulder of the one side. So you're just gonna chain one and then you're gonna single crochet the first two together. So going in the first one pull through and then go to the next one pull through and you pull through all three and that's a two together single crochet. And now you're just gonna single crochet the remaining going all the way across and this will then conclude row number four. Once you're at the end of number four you're gonna turn your work and now let's begin number five. Okay let's begin number five. You're gonna chain up one, single crochet in the first and then you'll do your edging what you already know. Okay so now what are we gonna do? We're gonna do three in a row. So one, two, and three and this one cable that's coming over is gonna continue to follow us over. So then you'll pull those over. You'll single crochet into the next one. Okay and then the one after that and then the final two are two together. That was row number five. So turn your work and do number six. So you'll chain up, up one and you'll put the first two together and then single crochet yourself all the way back. So please do that for number six. I'll start number seven in a moment. Okay let's do seven and eight. Chain up one, one single crochet in the first and then come on down and do your edging. Just kind of move you over a bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so you're gonna do that. So number seven after you get the last one down it's the next two are by themselves. So single crochet and then you're gonna drag these cable over to meet up with you. You're then gonna single crochet in the next one and then you're gonna put the final two together. 
and then turn your work and do number eight. So chain up one and put the first two together and then single crochet all the way back and I'll see you at the beginning of number nine in just a moment. Okay number nine and ten is gonna be the final of the reduction when we doing when we're doing it. So we're gonna chain up one, we'll single crochet the first and then do your edging. Okay, so number nine here that we have, we're gonna do the next two is single crochet. And watch what we do, we have something special. So we're gonna grab the first one, do a front post double. But the next one, we have to put this one and the last single crochet together. So we're gonna do a front post around there and pull through two and hold, don't finish it. And then going into the last stitch, going right in, pull through and then pull through all three. And that put the last two together. So that was row number nine. So just turn our work and do number ten, chain up one and put the first two together and single crochet yourself all the way back and I'll meet you up on number eleven in just a moment. Okay let's do number eleven, twelve and thirteen. There is no reduction anymore. There's only nine stitches left. So chain up one and do one single crochet in the first and then drop on down and do your edging. Okay, so now we only have a few stitches left with technically only three left. So we'll single crochet in the last three. And let's turn our work and begin row number 12. In row number 12 you're gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in the, into each of the stitches going all the way across. And then finally we're gonna turn our work, excuse me for a sec. We're gonna do this and we're gonna do number 13 which is the final. So you're just gonna chain up one, one single crochet in the first and then you'll do your edging. And then after your edging done there's only three stitches left. And this is where you're gonna end this story for the one side here. So just fasten off, leave a long tail that you can deal with later and you can pull that through and we'll work on that another time. So you can see when I zoom you out you have one shoulder completed and now we gotta do the completely the same thing on this side but we gotta start here and go this way and back. Let's begin the next side. So now we're gonna begin this side. It is total of 16 stitches. There's uh, missing 14 stitches here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So those 14 are skipped. If you feel like you may think that you're gonna be out of sync in some way, just count back 16 stitches from the uh, edge and then that's where you're gonna start. But that's completely up to you if you wanna do that. We're gonna follow the same sequence but we're gonna do it in the opposite way. So we're gonna start this way and work our way through there and we'll start with row number three here on this side. Let's begin. So you're going to begin and you can skip 14 stitches in the center here or you can count back the 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So that 16th is where you're gonna start. So just attach your yarn and then chain one and you can crochet right up over top of the straggler but you can use a tapestry needle in the end as well to get rid of it. So we're immediately going to start with your front post doubles and you're gonna capture the ones that are in behind here and you're gonna pull those out. So you do the first two. It's what you already know. You're just starting at a different spot and those count as the two that it's sitting in front of. You'll single crochet the next two and then you'll come back in and grab those cables. Or grab those posts I should say and that counts as the two that it's sitting in front of and now you'll single crochet the next four in a row. So one, two, three, and four and that will take you to doing your edging. 
So I want you to do this all the way to this edge. This is row number three. And then that's it. So you come into the back side when you turn it's just a regular a matter of doing single crochets and more and so we're gonna be starting to do the reduction then at the neck area right here. So let's begin to do that next. So let's begin number four. You're gonna chain up one and you just have to remember that when you get to the neck area that you just have to put the last two stitches together as one so that you can start eliminating out stitches. So if you're thinking to yourself, well why didn't you start on the edge and then work your way the other way like you did on the other side? That would make the stitches backwards for the one row and it would be very noticeable on your project. So that's why you're always having to jump over across the front section in order to skip stitches to do that. So I'm looking for the final two. It's the top of the two of the, of the front posts and I'm gonna put those two together and then that was row number four. So you're gonna turn your work and let's begin number five. So number five we're gonna start decreasing immediately. So we're gonna chain up one and put the first two together and then we're going to single crochet the next two and then carry up those front posts and take them with you. And that will count as the two that they're sitting in front of. So one, two and you will single crochet then the next um, what do we have here? The next three. So one, two and three and then you'll jump on down and do your edging that you already know how to do. So a lot of people get kind of um, weary when you start having to change yarns and have to do shoulder work and stuff on clothing. That's where a lot of people drop off in the crochet field and they end up going with home decor and stuff. So it's not as technical but you can see it's really not that hard. So we're gonna turn our work and do row number six. In row number six we're gonna just chain up one and we'll do one single crochet all the way across except for the final two. We'll put those two together when we get there. So I'm coming close to the end for this row number six and we're gonna put the final two together and then turn our work and then begin number seven back on the front side once again. Let's begin number seven. Chain up one. You'll put the first two together and the next single crochet is by itself and then you're gonna pick up these and drag them over front post double. Then you only have two in a row after that and then you're doing your edging. Okay, so coming up to the end of that one, number seven, turn your work and you will do number eight. You just chain up one and then do one single crochet in each except for the final two and you'll put those two together. So put the final two together there and that was row eight. Let's do number nine and ten. Okay, nine and ten is going to be the final of the reduction. So you're just gonna chain up one on the first one and you're gonna put the first single crochet together. So you're just gonna go in and then you're gonna pick up the first post. So you don't finish it. So you just pick up the first post. You'll go around and then pull through all three and that puts the single crochet and the front post together and then you'll go and do a front post. You have two stitches left before doing the edge work and then you're gonna do that. So this is row number nine. And then you'll turn your work and let's do number 10. So you just uh, chain up one and we'll do one single crochet in each of the stitches going across except for the final two. 
you'll put those two together. And finally put the final two together and there should be nine stitches left. So let's do number 11, 12 and 13. So let's do 11, 12 and 13 all in one take here. So we got chain up one and you're just applying one single crochet uh, sorry into the first three. So one, two and three and then you're doing your edging. And this is going to be number 11. And then number 12, we're not doing any reduction as I mentioned. So you just turn, chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch going across. And then finally you're gonna turn your work and do lucky row number 13. So there's no change. So there's chain, uh, chain one and one single crochet into the first three and then come on down and do those front posts for the edging. And then this is where the front panel ends. And we're not doing any more to it and we're gonna be moving to the back panel in a few moments from now. We're beginning that journey once again. So this is it and you're gonna get rid of the yarn. So do you notice, uh, let's get you out here. So do you notice that this yarn is finishing here on this corner? So this yarn should finish on this corner and that tells me that everything is in alignment and you cannot tell that I made any mistakes as far as like not honoring the front or back side because everything looks pretty consistent. So now this is it for the front panel and now we're gonna move on to the second panel which is the back. The back does not have any of this and it's just a straight panel going up from the base but also maintaining just the rib work that's on the bottom and on the edge only and the back is completely flat. So let's now start the back. It says work these three asterisks to these three asterisks and that is on the first page and essentially what this is, it's at the beginning of this from one to four all over again. Now here's the thing, the setup row here is going to have you add an extra stitch about midway through. So it was here the last time. It's about midway through so that you can get to your 46 stitches across in order to have the balance. So it will match by the time it gets to the top of the panel. So we're gonna start in, it's already what you know right in the base right here and we're going to begin a new section right here and this will be the back. Let's begin the back panel. I need you to chain 46, it's like we did before. So just start doing that and one, So let's begin to do the back panel. Let's start our slip knot and chain 46. We've done this before. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 46. Meet me back here in just a moment. Let's do row number one. Third chain from the hook. It's already what you know. Just doing the back hump of the chain and apply one half double crochet in each of the chains going all the way across. Please verify that you only have 45. Um, half double crochets, the chaining that you skipped over is considered one. So when you count, make sure that you do count that chains, th those two chains you skipped over as a stitch. And I'll be back in just a moment. This is row number one. So let's begin row number two. I have verified that there is 45 stitches on here. That includes that chaining that I skipped over. And let's begin number two. You've done it before. So chain two, that will count as your first half double crochet. So you're gonna go into your first post and it will be around the back post get going. I don't need to spend a lot of time on this because you probably have already done it. So now the next one is a front post. So alternate between the two. So the next one is a back and the next one is the front. So if your counts are right, the one just before the end will be a back post and then the last one will be a half double crochet into the turning chain which is that chain two. I'll be there in just a moment. So I'm coming up onto the row two here at the end and the last one is the back post double crochet and then in the turning chain that you skipped over initially it's going to be half double crochet in that chain. Don't go into a space or it'll stay open. So now you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number three. 
In row number three you're gonna chain two. There's your first half and then you're just gonna maintain what you see. So you can see this is on the front side. So this will be a front post double crochet. You can see that this is on the back. So that will stay as a back post double crochet and you'll do this all the way across and the very last uh, turning chain will be one half double crochet and I'll see you there in a moment. This is row number three. I'm coming up to the end of number three. So the last one just before the end is a front post double crochet and then a half double crochet in the turning chain. Let's begin number four which will be the ending of the ribbing at the base of the back panel. The base of the back panel is uh, number four here and you are going to begin by chaining two and then just maintain what you see. So you see the first one's in the back so you just wanna keep it as the back and then the next one's in the front and just keep alternating and maybe at the end of this row, this is row number four and then we're going to begin the back panel itself without the cabling. So I'm moving all the way across here on number four and then we're just doing half double crochet in the turning and then that's it. So now we're going to begin the setup row number one. We just have to add an extra stitch near the middle and we're going to be maintaining this as well. So we're gonna also get ourselves start, uh, started with the ribbing which will be the edging that goes up on the side that we already know about. So let's go back quickly to the diagram. So we have our diagram so we're gonna be picking up and we're doing exactly what you see on the edges here and then these will all just be single crochets in the middle but about halfway there will be two into the same stitch so that it will give us the right count. So in the future there will be 34 single crochets in between the edging that you have before you get to those posts and we're gonna be doing that next. So let's do the setup row number one. So let's do the setup row number one. You're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet in the first and then you're gonna be coming down into this existing front post here but it's two down so make sure you extend all the way to the second and you'll do a front post double crochet around there. You've already done this before. You'll single crochet in the next and then jump on down. Single crochet in the next and then jump on down. Now starting in the next stitch you're gonna do the next 16 in a row. So let's do that 16 single crochets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Once you get sixteen done the next one is gonna be two into the same stitch. So two single crochets so one and two. So now it's gonna expand and now you'll do the next sixteen in a row of single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So this is right because I can see these three that are jumping out in front here. So those are the three that are, will be part of the edge. So coming down the second one and so just come on down, single crochet the next, come on down, single crochet the next, come on down and then you'll have to, I'm uh, sorry, then you'll single crochet into the last turning chain. So that was set up row number one. You have an extra stitch in the middle and let's turn over and do begin row number two. So like it was in the front panel when you're looking at the back side of the work it's just a straight shot of single crochet. So chain up one, do one single crochet in each stitch all the way across and this will be row number two. I'll be back in the mo at the end of this row and we'll start row number three just to make sure that you understand the repeat for the remaining of this section. So I'm coming up to the end of number two. Just one single crochet in each stitch all the way. Turn your work and let's begin row number three. So number three is part of the repeat pattern. So two and three is gonna get repeated over and over and over. So let's start and we wanna put these um, edging back in and then there's gonna be 34 single crochets. I don't believe you're gonna need to count it but if you feel like you have to then, then go for it. But if you, but I think honestly you won't need to. So just chain up one and single crochet in the first and then jump on down and do your edging like you already did it on the front panel. 
So it's just the side only and then you'll do the other side when you get there. So now you can count your stitches over if you want to but you just got a single crochet then the remaining until you get close to the other side where the final three are gonna be picked up and maintained for the edging. So either count 34 and meet me there or just wing it and meet me there anyway. <laughs> so I'm coming across on number three. I've already taken account it there is 34 here. Just take a mental note on what it looks like so that you don't have to obsessively count and then you can tell see this stitch belongs there so you know that's gonna have to be a front post double and then once you get the first one done then you can just zip your way to the end. So if you think you're gaining stitches it's gonna be that you are adding you you are um, you're going too far with your stitch work when you go across and if you're subtracting it means that something is wrong uh, that you're not counting enough. So you know just play with it and go with it and see how you're gonna do. So let's talk about the repeat because this is all you need to know for the back panel and let's talk about that. So now you're gonna put your hook into the wind and you're gonna repeat the last two rows two and three until it measures approximately eight inches and you're gonna finish on the wrong side. So when you finish this is the right side of the work. So when you finish you should finish so that it's on the back side here and you'll end up right there. So I'm gonna leave that for you and I will be back in a moment and I got a bit of homework to do before I can see you again next time but you will just be a second for now. I'll see you in the back in a moment. When I last left you I was working on the sample. This is the right side facing up and I have there's the back. So when you finished it you should finish on the wrong side. So this is where I've ended and so now I'm ready to attach this to the front side. So let's grab that up and let's be right back in a second. So let's attach the front and back together. So both sides are facing up. The right side that's considered the right side you can see by the, the ribbing there. So you know that there is nine stitches that are on here and so you only have to attach nine stitches here. So just starting at the first one just go right in and then just match it to the stitch on the other side. And any loose ends you can deal with later. So if you have to start new yarn then start new yarn. So once you get the first stitch in do the second and work your way along capturing all this. This is considered a whip stitch. Pull it tight but not crazy enough to change the shape. And once you get all the way across and you've run out on the one side you're done. So just make sure that you fasten off and favor the back side of it. So just take your needle to the opposite side which is the underside and turn it over and just make sure it gets secured on this side. Make sure that your yarn is also tight so the seam line is closed and then once you're happy with it just weave the end in and when you weave it in don't just weave it once, weave it three times. So we have once and a slightly different path a second time and then a slightly different path a third time. Just keep the needle on the on this side of the work on the underneath. Once you're happy with that you can get rid of that. You can get rid of any tails that you have and then what I want you to do is that I want you to attach the other side also the same way and you don't need to see me do that and we're gonna be right back and then we need to do the collar for this as well. So now I've just sewn in all my loose ends and now I just have my panel to work with. So you can see this here if you were wearing it would look like this. So we just have now the collar left and that's going to be next. So the collar is done as a separate piece and what you can do what I'm gonna do is just take your tape measure and measure around your collar just roughly so that you know where to go. So just kind of trace it and once you get this measurement you'll be able to know roughly what you're looking for. So this is approximately 19 inches so when you do the collar it says do the collar and continue to do the, the same row until it measures approximately around there. So it's about 19 inches. So what I would probably wanna do is that I want it slightly stretched. So I'd probably wanna do 
around 18. And so if it's um, if I just kind of pull on it then I should get to 19. So you can decide. I may want to just go to 17 and a half then kind of pull and see if it relaxes and does a good job at 19 and if it's like too much of a stretch you think then you just uh, crochet a few more rows. So let's start doing the back area. This is the collar. Sorry this, this is the collar. This is not the back at all. So let's begin to do the collar and I need you to start with your hook and your yarn and I need you to chain a total of 30. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Go all the way to 30. Meet me back here in just a moment. So here is the collar height. It will contract a little bit more so it's not gonna be that tall by the time you're done. So you're going to then go for a first row, third chain from the hook. Do it like I showed you before. So go 1, 2 and do a half double crochet on the back hump of the chain and I want you to go all the way down your chain with just doing half double crochet and please do this and I will see you at the end of row number one in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. So the chain two that you skipped in the beginning also counts as a stitch like it did before. So once you get to the end of number one turn your work and we're now going to begin something fun and this is going to be the horizontal bar next. So we're going to begin and this is a, a better way of doing what I'm about to show you. So I've done this before but it was never in the instruction this way so it's awesome. So you're gonna chain two. This is gonna count as the very first stitch. So the horizontal bar that you're going to create is actually just right below. So it's right there. So if you look at it there's the top of the stitch. You want to do the horizontal bar and this is going to create that look of there. So you're doing a, a crochet sorry you're doing a half double crochet on the horizontal bar. Once you start doing the, hor the horizontal bars this naturally turns over and then you get a, a really beautiful line on the back side. So you're gonna do this for every row now getting to the size that we talked about. In my case I, I need to get to 19 inches total with a slight stretch. So I'm just gonna crochet back and forth on this rows using the horizontal bar. So let me get to the end of the row and show you what to do. So I'm coming close to where I'm supposed to be finishing and so I need to come into the horizontal bar of this one. So notice that it's off to the one side. It's not right above the bar. It's just off to the one side just for your counting and then you go into the turning chain which is right there with a regular half double crochet. Okay and if you wanna verify your count you should have only 29. So I need you to turn your work and do this over and over and over to get to the size. So see what see what it creates. It's amazing. So you're gonna chain two. So you're gonna immediately jump to the very next one which is right here and go down to the horizontal bar to get it. And I need you to go back and forth until you get to the size that you need and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next time. But for me it's TV time and I'll be back in a few seconds from now but I got some homework to do in the meantime. So I'm back and it is actually the next day so I filmed all this on day one and now I'm about to do this on day two. So I'm binge watching a show at um, night time so I did this during the show last night and this is the collar. So I did the dimensions that I was thinking about but I have not fastened off the yarn. So you gotta fasten off here and you end uh, when you're good and ready. What you want to do is that you wanna start on the opposite end and you wanna start pinning it to your, your project. So I am right handed. This may be a left handed video but start on the left hand corner or left, left hand um, shoulder and what you wanna do is that you just kinda wanna eye it up and see if it's gonna go all the way around. You want a slight stretch. So what I'm going to do is that this collar is going to be closed but I don't wanna close it yet because I want to stretch this in a way that makes sense. So I'm gonna do that stretch now and then I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm gonna use some stitch markers. Okay so I'm just gonna take some stitch markers and I'm going to just stitch mark the panels together like so. So I want to just see how it's gonna be. So if I think that there's too much here I can always frog which means to rip out and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do the other side as well. So I'll put the other side in and then I'm gonna see how it stretches from this point. Okay so I'm just gonna open it up. 
get the halfway mark. So the halfway mark should be there somewhere. And I'm just attaching it to the project itself. Okay, so now that's the halfway. So now I'm gonna just open it up and determine whether I think there's enough space to get this around. So I'm going to also stitch mark then the halfway point. So it's got a bit of stretch to it which is what you're looking for. Let's put the halfway mark there. It's possible if you don't use stitch markers that you end up sewing things and then it's uneven. So now I'm gonna do the front side here. So I think I got the right dimension. Then I'm gonna take about the halfway mark. And I may just want to just, I have extra so I can go there. So now is the time to decide what you wanna do. So when you go to wear this, we will be sewing this closed and then you'll flip it down and therefore you'll have your, your cowl. So I think I'm good. So what I'm gonna do now is to sew this to the project and let's do that next. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm gonna say that this is done. So this will be finished. So I'm not gonna frog anything. So if there was too much slack, do you, you thought you could have actually just, um, just undid it before you committed to it. So I am looking at the good side of the project. So now what I wanna do is I wanna flip it to the back side here and I wanna start doing my sewing process. So I'm going to sew on the back side so that it keeps anything that's abnormal looking to the underside and we're going to grab some spare yarn that we have from our ball and we're gonna create the tail that we need or the long strand so I can go all the way around. So it may be a little bit generous in the beginning. So what I like to do when I do something like this is that I like to create a slip knot on the one side and then on the other I'm gonna feed that through the tapestry needle. So all I'm just gonna do is just using the stitch markers as my point, I'm gonna go through the piece and then through the panel. And I'm gonna pull up and when I get closer, I'm going to put this through the, the slip knot so that it locks onto itself. And then we can use the tapestry needle to hide in that loose end later. So just working sequentially across, try to go into some chain work. Don't ever go into a big space and just sew it. This is called the whip stitch. I'm not sure it's called a mattress stitch, but somebody might correct me on that, which is very possible. So I'm just gonna go through and through just kind of matching things together and I'm looking to make sure that it always kind of stays the same. So if I'm starting to see it bunch up then you may have to um, jump stitch work on the sides. So for example if this is starting to bunch up you may have to then just change your position. So if you see that if that's happening you may have to use the same stitches you just did or you may have to progress forward. So you have to decide what you would like to do. This is one of the art forms of doing crochet clothing. So let's do this all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around. It's actually a lot easier than I was thinking. Sometimes this kind of concept I get like really nervous of sewing things together. But it's going pretty good so far. Knock on wood. <laughs> and I'm coming around back to where I started. 
take up my stitch markers. So I have a nice good clean shot at the beginning. Okay, I'm just using my hands to make sure that there's no gonna be open spaces. So now I want to take this and bring the collar out on the inside here and I wanna match the stitches together. So hopefully, if you didn't leave enough yarn, just start a new yarn strand. And here's the thing. We want a nice join on this thing. I'll deal with this other strand later. But what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna match the stitch. So I usually do like the back loop of one side and then the stitch on the other to keep the consistency. Okay, and all I wanna do is just move down the entire collar in the same format. And I'm gonna match stitch to stitch all the way and I'll be back in just a moment. So now I'm just coming all the way to the tip of the collar right at the top and now I wanna fasten off. So I'm going to secure this yarn with a knot And then what I want to do is that I wanna drag it through the stitch work but keep the needle on this side of the work so don't let it pop out to the beginning. And I wanna go back and forth a total of three times in the, and hide that in. I'll do that with any loose ends that I have. I do that with all my tutorials. It's not a special thing for this. And now this is it. So I'm going to just secure any more loose ends and this will be the end of the project and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've just secured all my loose ends and now I'm gonna turn it around. So inside out or outside out <laughs> however you say it. So it's got a very long tall collar like so. And then you're just gonna flip down the collar. So let me just back it a little bit. And now you're just gonna flip it to the right side meaning like the side that faces you and now you have something that you can put on uh, before you put on your coat and it's really kind of cool. So this is exactly what it looks like and pretty awesome. This is the Cliff Crest Cowl Collar uh, by Yarnspirations.com and by Gail and this has been a fun project to do. It's taken me two days to make this and you could have probably did it in one day. It depends on your time schedule of course and this is awesome. Have a great one and we hope to see you again real soon right here on the Crochet Crowd and Yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.